road. Now get out! Good holiday. No. Catch anything? The only ratty fish that came my way was an old trout in the barn. She was the wrong side of 50. Can't have been using the right fly. Anyway, it's nice to see you back again. Liar. Don't forget the ceremony, 10 o'clock. What's that? Get out of the way! That dog's meat wagon of yours. I want to get out. Oh, you'll have to wait for us now. We've got a casualty here. Hello. You all right? Yes, thank you. I'm terribly sorry to cause all this trouble. Don't worry. We'll look after you. Are you all doctors? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Come on. All right. Come on. Steady with her. Now, don't worry. We'll look after you. Lady Willoughby won't like it. She won't like it at all. After all, the old boy did raise most of the money. Morning, Matron. Good morning, Sir Lancelot. I hope you enjoyed your holiday. Not in the least. And don't ask me if I caught any fish. Oh, sorry, I'm sir. Good holiday, sir. Caught any fish? No! But you have caught your trousers. I'll get a stitch put in. You'll do no such thing. The only person who does any decent stitching around here is myself. Let's get on. It's ten o'clock, sir. I'm perfectly well aware of that. What's new in the ward? But you're not going to do your round now, Sir Lancelot. And why not? The ceremony, sir. I've got some notes on the procedure. Good grief, boy. I don't need any notes. This is a foundation stone, not a gall stone. Good. That's very good. It's wonderful. Do those belong to that casualty in there? Yes, sir. I'll take them in. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Sparrow. I must have done something dreadful. You're, you're the fifth. No, I'm the first. These aren't really doctors at all. Oh, aren't they? What a shame. Lots of learning to do, eh, Gillibrand? Yes, sir. Excuse me. But it's my ankle that hurts, Doctor. 
Oh, uh, I can't hear a thing with these things on. What did you say? It's only my ankle. Um, why are you doing this? Uh, <coughs> why am I doing this, Gillibrand? Practice, sir? Thoroughness, Gillibrand, thoroughness! Just because there's one obvious injury doesn't mean to say there isn't another. Mm. You have to test for everything. Lungs, heart, spine, and all the other organs. But apart from my ankle, I feel perfect. Oh, but you are. Quite perfect. Now, you all go and have a look at the X-ray screen, see what you can find. Is there something broken? No, no, a minor sprain. No harm done. There was to the car. I think it's a write-off. Where are you going? Going, London? Yes. It isn't going to show, is it? I, I have to be so careful about legs in my job. What do you do? <clears throat> a dancer? Model. Oh. What treatment are you going to give me? Bandage it and elevate the leg for a few hours. By this evening, you should be fit for anything. Uh, would you like me to drive you up to London? Would you really? Uh, it's my night off. Oh, that's marvellous. What a fabulous coincidence. <laughs> Now, what's the matter with you? They say I've slipped a disc. They would have said you had sciatica when I was a boy. How'd you do it? Jumping. Over a gate? Out of a window. Oh. I suppose the husband came in through the front door. Certainly not. There was a fire. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, gentlemen, the patient complains of a slipped disc. What treatment would you prescribe? You. Bed rest, followed by traction, followed by a spinal support, Followed by physiotherapy. Followed by no improvement at all. Physiotherapy. Palliative poppycock! When do you take your finals, boy? In six weeks, sir. You'll be taking them a second time in six months if you talk drivel like that. Surely, sir, in a mild case. Rubbish! There's only one thing for him. The knife. Oh, don't worry. I'll fit you in somewhere. Good morning to you. Now, what have we here? Collector me, you performed just before you went away, Sir Lance. Ah, yes. Let's have a look. Take your great paws away, nurse. We aren't playing animal grab. Beautiful. Hmm. Had to change lives in midstream with you, you know. Look at this, gentlemen. A perfect cut. How are you feeling? Ever so tired. So was I after I'd stuffed all that lot back inside you. It was like trying to coil a fire hose into an overnight bag. Good morning. I remember when I was DDMS in the Navy. In cases of intestinal obstruction, we didn't pray for dry weather. Didn't pray for wet, we just prayed for wind. What are you doing here, Simon? I'm reminding you of a ceremony, sir, and of a very old, old joke. All right, I'm coming. Stuart, don't let him worry you too much. He once threw the whole book at me. I survived. Ah, Simon. I wish you'd be so kind as to park your perambulating sardine can in the proper space reserved for it. I couldn't get out of my car this I'm morning. I'm sorry, Lance. I was a bit pushed this morning. Good morning, nurse. Good morning, Dr. Morning. Sir. Rather nice looking, don't you think? Well, mind your activities set to exclusively around the female sex. Well, because I find them attractive. Attractive? Good morning, morning. sir. Good morning. The doctor's got no right to be attractive. Clouds the brain and unsteady the hair. Well, it's never happened to me. And I take my job as seriously as the next man, let me tell you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. You're welcome. Revolting. You might find it rejuvenating. Morning, Tide. Morning, Golly. Morning. Morning, Lady Willoughby. Before you proceed, Sir Lancelot, I wish to register a formal complaint. What's the matter? That call potty I did for you not giving out the raid? Really? Delighted to hear it. Can't afford a leak at your age. Ladies and gentlemen, I now declare this stone well and truly. Who perpetrated this monstrosity? There's something wrong, sir. My name is Spratt, with an S. S for spleen, P for prostate, R for rump, A for arth, perplexy. Who, who, who contrived this disgusting insult? Sir Lancelot, we shall speak to the Master Mason and he'll alter it, I promise you. If he doesn't, I'll alter him, I promise you. Ladies and gentlemen, with the minimum of confidence, I declare this stone well and truly laid.
speech. Ladies and gentlemen, although work on our new wing has already begun, a substantial amount of money is still needed. It is up to you to find it. Doubtless if I apply pressure in the right quarter, the results Watch will it! Be... Ah! 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 Get the crane over. I'm going to sue those ruddy contractors until they haven't got a fly button left they can call their own. Go easy, you dotes. I'm in mortal agony. Shall I send for morphia, Doctor? No, send for a bottle of brandy. You'll have some hot sweet tea and like it. But Simon, I'm feeling faint. Now I can hardly speak. What if you clubs are not a corpse yet? <laughs> I've never had a slip disc in my life. News for you, you've got one now. What are you going to do about it? I seem to remember in cases like this that you used to recommend the knife. Nonsense. Nobody's going to stick a knife into my back, although most of my so-called colleagues have been trying to do so for years. <laughs> well, you're going to be stuck here for a while anyway. What, in this tumble-down Lazar house? Stop this contraption. Sir, so don't stop what are you doing. I'm trying to get out. Well, right, still got the stick. Go! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's sweet of you to drive me up. Is this service always included in your treatment, This doctor? is not treatment, and I'm not your doctor. You belong to the hospital, doesn't you, gentlemen? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Shirts, skirts, bras, pants. Advertising such a bore, really. I want to give it all I can get into movies. Oh, you mean be a film star? Hmm. Yeah. Well, not immediately, of course. I might be able to help you there, you know. Because I know quite a lot of film people. I am professional, I mean. Do you? Hmm. You know, Simon, I'm beginning to think you could be rather a fabulous sort of person. Thank you again for bringing me down. No, not at all. I'll see you up. Oh, no, there's no way I can manage. Well, I think that ankle needs a little support. Doctor? No, friend. All right. Oh, can you get my bag? It's in the back somewhere. A bag, a bag. Oh, yes. Oh, the door. What's the matter? That's a police car. So? They can't arrest us. We're not burglars. We're just sitting. You don't have to be burglars these days. You just have to sit. Uh, good evening, officer. I was uh, um, just finding this young lady's handbag. Uh-huh. Are you a doctor, sir? Y yes, I am. <clears throat> but even uh, doctors are human. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you'd care to come with me, sir? Uh, yes, I would, but I, I have explained to yes, you Yes, well, there's an old lady passed out on the pavement just down the street, so we just spotted the label on your windscreen. Uh, we have got the right bag, have we, sir? No, we haven't. When am I going to see you again? 23. B. I did not order one. Yes, but the doctor did. I do not require physiotherapy. I said I do not require physiotherapy. Yes, Sir Lancelot, I heard you, and so I imagined it the rest of the block. Now, tell me, are you in pain? Of course I'm in pain, woman. I've got a slipped disc. Well, I did see the x-rays, but it's nothing very much. We'll soon get you better. Don't do that! What have you got there? Madam? <laughs> I can scarcely give you treatment through two layers of blanket, can I? You're not going to give me any treatment, and don't shake my bottle of wine. 
Where are you going? Well, there are other patients who need me, you know, Sir Lancelot. Come here. I wish to discuss my case with you. There's a slight narrowing of your L5-S1 disc space. You've made some progress with traction and bed rest. Now you need massage and physiotherapy, right? I was going to do the talking, madam. And so you shall, Sir Lancelot. Now turn over, will you? I refuse. It's three and a oh. half guineas for half an hour, you know. You're private. I don't appear to be. Now roll over. Hmm? Very well. No. Oh, oh. oh. Ooh. That's it. Ooh. Now, put your arms by your side. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, what are you doing? I'm putting down your pajamas. Oh. Don't worry, I've lived. Uh. Oh. Is that it? Yes. Right. No. 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 Don't let me interrupt the flow, Sir Lancelot. What's your name? Iris Marchant. Hmm. Stuart. Yes, sir? There's a patient just come in for investigation. I'd like you to have a look at her, if you will. Me? Why me? Because I'd like your opinion, that's why. Thank you, sir. Here's the letter from our doctor. It's not very cheerful. So give her all the attention you can and be gentle. She's very frightened. Her husband's apparently more worried about his pigeon loft than he is about her. You know the type. So you haven't really felt any pain at all, Mrs. Pain. No, that's right. I can't say that I have. Wait a minute, though. Yes, I did feel a pain once. When? On a Sunday, it was, after chapel. Where? I remember now. It was in the kitchen. No, I mean what part of you? Your chest, your stomach, your head? Oh, it... <laughs> Go ahead. Of course, my husband didn't really mean to. He was only being playful, you understand? <laughs> I, I don't think we're getting very far, are we? Aren't we? I thought we were getting on swimming, like. You're a lovely little doctor, aren't you? Yeah, go on. You finish these. I only like the red ones. There you are, my dear. Thank you. Got your tea? Made you comfortable? Yes, thank you, Doctor. Good. Uh, Mrs. Whitaker, this is Mr. Stewart. He's a, a colleague of mine. How do you do? He's going to help me find out what the trouble is and generally keep an eye on you. All right? Thank you. Good. Well, I'll leave you to get to know each other. Um, I'll speak to you later. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Well, I'm sure you'll all be very glad to hear that Sir Lancelot is making excellent progress. However, <clears throat> it'll be some time before he's fully recovered, so uh, until then, you'll have to put up with me. And I want no questions about the bleeding time from you. Now, where's this case we thought might exercise these sparkling intellects? Over here, Dr. Sparrow. Who's the dresser on the case? Uh, I am, sir. Uh oh. Everything teed up, Gillibrand? Now, a nice, clear, concise history. Symptoms, signs, diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment. <clears throat> uh, this is Mrs. Parry, sir. She's uh, a housewife, uh, 42, and she's had 10 children. Nine. You said 10. Did I? Perhaps it is 10, then. But well, I see there's Lodwin and Owen, uh, David and Dawn. Never mind, Mrs. Parry. You, you uh, work it out for yourself, and we'll continue. Carry on. Uh, well, there's no history of previous illness, sir. Any operations? Uh, none. I've had 10. You said none. No, oh, ten. I was forgetting little Caradog. I had him two years ago. That reminds me, I haven't seen him about lately. Carry on. Uh, uh, well, the patient complains of uh, periodic swelling of the abdomen, sir. Uh, apart from her pregnancies? Well, uh, yes, sir. Any other symptoms? Uh, only swelling. Uh. And wind. Now, even with these meagre details which Mr. Gellibrand has managed to elicit, we should be able to manage one first tentative diagnosis. Anyone? Chronic cholecystitis. Why? Oh, uh, well, the uh, patient, sir. She satisfies the six Fs of gallbladder disease. 
Yeah, you're right. Now, each of you give me F, one F each. Fair? Fat? Fertile? Female? Forty. Come on, get a brand. I think they've given it to you. Fair, fat, female, fertile, forty. F. Flat. Me, flat? Flatulence, you cretin! Yes, sir. Now for the examination. Now then, what are we looking for? Fluid in the peritoneum. How do we test for it? Put one hand on one side, flick the other, and see if you can feel the vibration. And if we feel it, what do we call it? A, a fluid thrill. Right. Now, Miss... Uh... Wick. Would you like to try for a fluid thrill, Miss Wick? Oh, cold. Uh, did you feel a thrill? No. No, I didn't think you would, somehow. Now we should listen for borborygamy. What are borborygamy? It's the sounds made by gas in the intestine when there is hypermotility, sir. Great. Can you hear any? Oh, Mr. Edgewell, fancy that. I thought I'd had the last of those. All right, gentlemen, you come round here, you three. Mrs. Barry, do you keep your bowels open regularly? Regular as clockwork. Every fortnight. And what do you take for constipation? Castor oil or cascara? Oh, nothing like that. I just take my knitting. Simon, mm -hmm. I think you are absolutely fabulous. Good. <laughs> Why? Because if you hadn't known someone... Who knew someone? Who told someone about me, we wouldn't be on our way to meet Mr. Luther Heilbronn. Well, don't be too depressed, really. We've got a date after this. I wonder what he's like. Well, I think he's successful, unscrupulous, predatory. Dreamy. Middle-aged, overweight, bald-headed and pot -bit. Oh, shut up. You haven't even met him. I've no intention of meeting anybody who makes a film called The Sorrows of Salome. It's going to be a fabulous film. Enormous, great big epic, all in Rome. <laughs> Salome never got within a thousand miles of Rome. Well, she does in the film. And so shall I if I can be one of her handmaidens. What precisely does a handmaiden do? Hand things, I suppose. Yeah, not bad, I suppose. Who was playing Salome? Genevieve Milton. She was unknown a few years ago, just like me. Now she's very big. That's apparent. Mr. Heilbronn discovered her in a coffee bar. I should have thought it was a dairy. But Mr. Heilbronn is getting worse every minute. Ah. Uh, yeah. He's practically speechless. Well, where's the hotel doctor? Tell him to send out for one. Send out for one. Tell him. <coughs> Who? Harry, there's some dame down at the desk said you asked her to come up and see you. Tell her I'll call her tomorrow. Uh, uh, next week. Okay, sometime never. What the hell? Tell her. Tell her what the hell. I'm afraid Mr. Heilbronn can't see you after all. What? Come on, Delia. These theatricals are very unreliable. Come on. Over we go. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. No, please. That's absolutely impossible. Mr. Heilbronn said Mr. that... Mr. Heilbronn can't say anything at the moment, madam. He's lost his voice. And I've lost the hotel doctor. You want a doctor for Mr. Heilbronn? Yes, madam. I've got one. You can't strip off here. What are you up to? I've got you a job. Why don't you let me do the talking tonight, Harry? Because the TV millions don't want to hear you talk, baby. It's an interview, isn't it? Yeah. Why shouldn't I talk? I can. You're strictly for the eye, honey. It's the doctor. Dr. Robin. Sparrow. Thank you. Now, doctor, I've got this condition. Yes, I... Good evening, Mr. Heilbronn. Oh, th this is Miss... Uh... My nurse. Yeah, yeah, come in, sit down, nurse. Oh, Mr. Harbron, I've been loving Sit down, to... nurse. Now then, Mr. Harbron, I understand that we're having trouble with our voice. Well, I don't know about you, but mine, you've got to fix. There's a hell of a lot of dollars hanging on this interview. <laughs> Never you mind, we'll see they drop in the right place. Yeah. Would you mind opening your mouth for me? Uh, why? Wider. That's it. I owe everything I am to Mr. Harbron. He found me. He molded me. He made me. <laughs> into a kind of symbol. And I hope your television viewers won't be disappointed when you see it exposed in my new film. Exposed? Well, Mr. Harbron, your, uh, your larynx, your throat, your vocal cords resound as a bell. 
And why the hell don't it ring? Have you had a, a recent uh, emotional upset, a, a sudden shock? I don't have shocks. I give them. I can imagine that. Uh, can I use your telephone? Help yourself. Thank you. Mr. Halgon, I, I hear you've been casting a new film, The, the Sorrows uh, of Salome. Uh, Welbeck 2434. I wondered if you decided on who was going to play Salome. Salome, I got. But I'm still looking for John the Baptist. All the actors I've seen, not a Baptist among them. You wouldn't know for John the Baptist, nurse. Well, no, but, but, but I've got a marvelous suggestion for, for... Medical counter, please. Mr. Hyde, Shh. I... It's him. It's him. Spirituality in the eyes. Serenity. I said medical counter. Honey, come in here. We got him, we got him. Oh, what we got, honey? Oh, he's cute. Who is he? Who is he? He's John the Baptist, that's who he is. You've found your voice again, Mr. Hilbron. I've not only found my voice, I found you. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna mold you. Delia, I told you these people around the The biggest, the greatest, the superbest symbol. Delia, out. John! Where are you going? Simon, there's no hurry. Are you kidding? Mr. Hyrum, you keep your voice and I'll keep my head. But John! John! A beautiful ward, sister. My congratulations. Thank you, Sir Lancelot. Oh, uh, matron. You're looking a little tired, my dear. Am I? Mustn't overdo things, you know. Good morning, Sir Lancelot. Good morning. It's nice to see you in harness again. Well, thank you. Though, of course, my thanks should go to Miss Marchant. How is your back, Sir Lancelot? Not a twin. And yourself? Oh, very well, thank you. Oh, splendid. Um, I'm afraid I have to visit another one of my patients, oh, Sir Lancelot. Of course, of course, I'm so sorry. Charming girl. Well, Mr. Lewis, and how are we this morning? Mustn't grumble, sir. Do you hear that, gentlemen? Mustn't grumble. And after all he's been through, he's the sort of patient who makes a surgeon's life really worthwhile. You'll come to understand that shortly, Stuart. Yes, sir. Well, you're cured, Mr. Lewis. But you needn't hurry. You can stay as long as you like. We're here to do what we can for you. Aren't we, sister? Well, naturally, Sir Lancelot. Goodbye, Mr. Lewis. And good luck to you. Yeah, what's come over him? He used to swear at him all that blue murder. There's something wrong. And I don't like it. Nor do I. Makes me feel rotten. <laughs> Here's the doctor to see you, Sir Lancelot. Morning, Lancelot. Go away. I didn't send for anybody. Now then, what's all this about the Lady Macbeth routine? I don't know what you're talking about. Mrs. Clapper says that you are sleepwalking. Sleepwalking hollyhocks. Hey, Sleepwalking me? That could be dangerous. It could be damaging. Uh, you don't mean to tell me that I'm... I mean, I've been wandering around without any... No, 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 no. Just, just around the house, apparently, that's all. Thank God for that. I don't mind admitting now you're here, Simon, that uh, I'm not myself. Not at all myself. Oh. 
Well, let's have a look. Come on. How long has he been going on for? Well, ever since I left that blasted hospital. I'm sure I was poisoned. Food there's not fit to manure rose beds. <laughs> you taking any measures yourself? Oh, the usual ones. Purging, inhalation, sweating. All quite useless. What's that? Garlic. Rub you round a bowl, you make a great salad. You know, you're quite wrong to despise these old folk remedies. I've got a maiden now who swears by garlic, never without a bit next to skin. I'm convinced that's why she's lived to be 92. Perhaps that's why she's still a maiden at 92. Heart all right? Hmm? Heart all right? Say one, one, one. One, one, one. No louder. One, one, one! Very interesting. Have you found anything? Had any pins and needles, dizziness, headaches? Uh, waterworks all right? Um, yes. No. No. Yes. Shoo! <laughs> Well, you've made a diagnosis, Simon. I don't know yet. Come see what your exercise tolerance is like. Come on, up you go. Come stand on this. And get up. Up again. Now do that 30 times while I go and borrow something from Mrs. Clapper. 30 times? Do you want to kill me, Simon? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Three. Four. Mrs. Clapper? Oh, yes, Doctor. Uh, have you got a pin or a needle I could borrow? Oh, did you have to cut him? No, no, no. I just want something for a test. Uh, anything sharp will do. Let me see. Would you like this? I think he'd love it. Oh. Good grief, what are you going to do with that? Sensation test. Shut your eyes and you won't notice. Not on your Nelly and not on mine either. All right. We'll come back to it then. Let's see about your blood pressure. I feel a little faint. I think I'll have a glass of brandy. In a minute. You know, Lancelot, your heart is as sound as a bell. It is. It is. Your lungs are as clean as a whistle. They are. And your blood pressure... Absolutely normal. So the whole thing must be psychosomatic or emotional. But Simon, I've never been called emotional before. Perhaps you've never been in love before. Get out of my house, you miserable bat eared quack! Well, that's my diagnosis. Take it or leave it. And my prescription is a good dinner, a bottle of wine, and press your suit on you know who. Is it serious, Doctor? Yes, it's serious, Mrs. Clapper. But don't worry, it'll take its course. Will he be going to bed? That depends on the physiotherapist. Oh. <laughs> stop! Stop! No, Doctor, don't stop! Tell me when I'm causing distress, Major. Distress! Distress! You're marvelous with that thing! Oh! oh. Well, actually, you're pretty marvellous altogether. Yes, Major. Oh, look here. Drop the handle. Tommy's the old moniker. Or Tiger. They used to call me Tiger French in Malaya. Oh, really? And why was that? <laughs> well, out in my first jungle patrol, I stalked a Chinese commie the whole day. Got him in the end. <laughs> Turned out to be a tiger. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't live a thing like that down, can you? So, so when I was posted, I decided to live up to it. Uh, fearless type, you know. That's why I grew a beard. <clears throat> Doesn't work, does it? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. I'm rather partial to beards. Why, you know? I say that is interesting. Uh, but it would be much more interesting for, for both of us if I could get these old pins walking again. <clears throat> yes, well, that's, um, that's why we're here, isn't it? <laughs> There's not much chance of that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Oh, though I'd be prepared to, to stake a package that if, if anybody could do the trick, you could march at old girl. <laughs> Iris is the moniker. Oh, oh, Iris. 
and inefficiency in every department. Including physiotherapy? Especially physiotherapy. Uh-huh. So she said no, huh? She turned me down, Simon, as if I'd been a first-year student. Or well, perhaps you are. ...in this particular field. It takes a lot of practice to know how to handle ladies. I've been in practice for years, and I've handled thousands of ladies. You've handled ladies, surgically speaking. You know all about their lights, their lungs, and their livers. But do you honestly know anything at all about their hearts? No. Well, well that's what I mean, you see. Well, what do you suggest? Well, coax her. Encourage her. Be kind, be gentle. She knows you mainly as a surgeon. Let her discover that you're a, a man of many parts. Show her my butterfly collection? No. Now, if possible, I think you should do something. Do something you're good at. Like fishing. You can't take her out fishing after dinner. Might play the piano. Random gems from the student prints. I was thinking more of the 48 preludes and fugues of Bach, which I play rather well. I don't think she'd sit through the 48, you. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, aren't, you, aren't you good at some kind of a... some kind of a game? I think I got the very thing. Now, my dear, you must be very careful not to cut the cloth. It's very expensive. And uh, don't wave your cue about. Now, the thing to do is to strike the white ball so that it knocks that red one into the pocket. Like that? Yes. That's what we call a fluke. Now, you now have to pot one of the coloured balls. It doesn't really matter which, but uh, I think the blue is the prettiest, like your eyes. Like that? Have you played this game before? <laughs> yes, I have. But I'm terribly out of practice. This calls for brandy. Not for me. But for me. Your ball. Thank you. Try this, Sir Lancelot. Thank you, my dear. Mm. Tell me, do you think it could be a little less formal? Oh, I see. Well, um, what would you like me to call you? Just plain Lancelot, or have you got some sort of a nickname? Well, that's what I have. It hasn't been used since I was at school. May I share the secret? Well, it's... Porker. Yes, well, little boys can be very unkind. And observant, too. Yes, I see what you mean. sentimental rubbish. 
Can't bear it. Well, your unconscious doesn't seem to agree with you. Well, what do you expect? That woman beats me at snooker and then tells me I'm too fat. Well, you are too fat. Look at you. Fat, I am not. I am generously proportioned. You've got to lose some weight if you want to make progress. Who was it said the commonest instrument of suicide are a knife and fork? Very well, but you're not going to get me nibbling grapefruit like an anemic rabbit. I could easily arrange for you to lose a few pounds. I know a bloke that runs a place. Look, why don't you let me call him? Wretched woman. Oh, very well. Fix it. <laughs> should be back any minute. Mm. Oh, look, here he is now. Uh, can you hang on a sec? It's Dr. Sparrow. Well, hello, Simon. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, Spratt, the surgeon, eh? Yes, but don't stand any nonsense from him. I want you to give him the works, the full treatment. Tomorrow? Well, splendid. Yes, I'll look in after he's been with you a few days. Good. How's business? Pretty brisk? Oh, mustn't grumble. Got my hands pretty full as usual, you know? Yeah, well, goodbye now. Anyone in charge of this DOS house? Ah, my name is Spratt, and I've come to lose some of this. Oh, oh yes, Sir Lancelot, we were expecting you. I should hope so. Kindly see that my baggage is brought in, and that the crate with the bottles is not shaken. Bottles? Lafitte, 37. And I don't want it ruined. A superbia! How lucky you are. Dr. Blacker, this is Sir Lancelot Spratt. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I run this little purgatory here. In that case, you will kindly see that my wine is not disturbed. It won't be. Not even by you. What? Uh, Miss Minton, see that Sir Lancelot's wine is put in the strong room, will you? Yes. Well, perhaps Sir Lancelot, you'd like me to show you around the place. Very well. Spratt. That's the surgeon, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I shall enjoy talking to him. I've been under the knife many times. Sorry you had to share a room, but we're very busy. Levar's room is like Ascot on Girl Cup Tay. Yes, uh, your companion was very delightful, Mr. Bradbury. Have you heard of him? I did an effectomy on a Bradbury some time ago. Well, perhaps he came on here. I think that hardly likely. He went straight to the London Necropolis. Oh, poor chap. Oh, this Bradbury is an author, very popular. Ah, Nurse. Uh, nurse Bossom will see that you'll get settled in, all right. I shall be seeing you later. This way, Sir Lancelot. Oh, somewhat off. Mr. Bradley, this is Sir Lancelot's fat, your roommate. Snap. Dinner menu consisted of... Well, it's, I don't think I'll get to like that. No, no, I uh, take brick order. I dictate a certain amount for my uh, books, you know. I hope it won't disturb you. I share your hope. You're just getting to bed, Sir Lancelot. And what good would that do me? I can't take any exercise in bed. Perhaps we can manage something. I doubt it. I mean, you could wiggle your toes. If I wanted to lose weight from my feet, woman, I could cut my toenails, damn it! Now, after me, girls, and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I hope you like it here. Yeah? Excuse me. That's right. We try to make everything friendly. Good afternoon, Miss Steele. What have you lost since yesterday? One, two, one. Very friendly girl. That's right. Keep it swinging. One, two, one. Uh, please sit down. What's your age, Sir Lancelot? No comment. Uh, over 50. Now, why do you want to lose weight? Why? Because I propose to ride a derby winner. You're not being very cooperative. I'm only trying to help. You would help a great deal more. If you were to cut out all this guff and arrange for to have my luncheon. Oh, I'm afraid we've got a lot of ground to cover before your luncheon. It really is a pleasure to meet you, Sir Lancelot. I wonder if you know my surgeon, Mr. Lucas. I do indeed. An incompetent. Well, as I was saying, 
one day, it was in last June to be precise, the 13th, I was seized with a great attack of pain and vomiting. So I called my doctor at once. Hey, somebody, come and let me out of here! Ah, oh, Sir Lancelot, you wanting something? Yes, let me out of here. I'm either being boiled alive or bored to death. Your time's not up yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> Another 20 minutes. Just relax. Enjoy yourself. Yes. And 36. And 37. And 38. And 39. And 40. And 41. Hey, what are you going on for? I stop at 40. We're stepping you up a bit, sir. Doctor's instructions. Not for me. Now, now, sir, we want to get our waistline down, don't we, sir? Perhaps if we don't, there's someone who'd like us to, eh? Tell me, what did you do before you got into this racket? Run a torture chamber somewhere? Me, sir? No, sir. Oh, me, sir. Judo instructor, black belt. Ah, judo. I must remember that. Now, come along, sir. No slacking. Now, put your back into it. Head 45. Head 46. Head 40. Now, steady, sir. Doctor's orders. Hurry! <laughs> A Japanese patient once paid me in kind. Good afternoon to you. Oh, blimey. The first course was a lobster bisque served hot, with a dish of local whipped cream on the side. Am I disturbing you? Indeed, no. I'm most interested. This was followed by a plain roast saddle of English lamb, cooked with rosemary for not too long, in a charcoal oven. Excellent. Just the way I like it myself. Mm, it's a place I've recommended in every issue of my book. Did you enjoy it, sir? No. Kindly bring the next course. I'm sorry, sir, but there isn't a next course. The cellar in this hotel is remarkably well stocked. I like particularly the range of Neersteiner and chose a very cooling 1959 at a moderate price. One of you gentlemen rang. I want a drink. Bring me the list. List, sir? We haven't one. Would you like barley water, soda water, or water? Get out! Am I disturbing you? I am going for a walk. A walk? Oh. Who are you looking at? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I thought you were someone I was looking for. Well, you've made a mistake, haven't you? Uh, yes, I have. Caught you, red-handed. I thought it was you. I'm not speaking to you. Naughty, naughty, Sir Lancelot. That's nowhere to talk to your doctor. Do you hear that? What? Sir Lancelot. He reckons he's one of them knights at the round table. Uh, he's one of them nutters that's got loose, isn't he? Yeah. Come on. Take him to a dead vicious, you know. Surely she's worth a little self-discipline, a bit of discomfort? I'm sure the clinic's treating you very well. They're treating me like a convict. Oh. They've taken me clothes away. I had to bribe the gardener to get a Macintosh and cap or I wouldn't have slipped out at all. Well, you shouldn't have slipped out at all. What's the point of coming out on a diet if you cheat? Come off it, Simon. I only came in here for a couple of lemon tea. Yeah, well, that shouldn't hurt you. Now, buzz off and leave me alone. Treble baked beans, treble fried bread, treble egg and treble chips. Anything else? How about treble spotted dick? Just for afters. Comes from Starvation Hall, does he? We get a lot of them in here. Oh, he's a big fella. What's the matter with a big blowout? He gets through that, he's gonna blow up. Ooh. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Perry. You shouldn't have any more trouble, providing you stick to that diet sheet we worked out for you. Don't you worry yourself, Doctor. I'm going to read it when I've got time. We try. Well, 
So long, Mrs. Brown. Bye. Keep Goodbye. smiling now. Yes. Rose Chirp. Good morning, sir. Here's the path reporter, Mrs. Whitaker. We should have to operate, shan't we? Yes. She was expecting to go home. Break it to a gentleman, will you? Me? You're responsible for it, aren't you? I've never had to tell anyone. That's part of the job. Telling people unpleasant truths. Easy does it. That's it. Goodbye, Mrs. Johnson. Goodbye. Glad to see you running about again. Oh, hello, Mrs. Utica. Hello. I thought you were flitting today, same as me. I was, but they want me to have an operation. Do they now? Oh, you love it. I did. It's even better than on the telly. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Perry, time you were off. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready now, sister. I think I said goodbye to everyone. Oh, I was forgetting Mrs. Roberts. Fancy forgetting you. It is Mrs. Roberts, isn't it? I thought so. Goodbye, then. You're looking better. Goodbye, all. Take care of yourself. Now, here's a model you might find attractive, sir. A Waterloo Waspy. Ugh. No, no, no. no I see what you mean, sir. I see what you mean. Now, I wonder if this one might appeal to you, sir. This one is the Harrogate Hourglass. No. No. You're absolutely right, sir, of course. It's not you. Uh, ah, now, uh, what about this one? What the devil do you call that? Well, you've guessed it, sir. Diabolo. Now, isn't it heaven? Easy to hell. Try it on, sir. Just for size. There we are. That's it. Compe. Oh, dreamy, dreamy, Sir Lancelot. With that, you're definitely with it. What do you mean, I'm with it? Well, I mean, you're not with it without it. Sprat. Oh, good morning, Iris, dear. How are you? Well, was the conference interesting? Can't expect it to have been a very exciting procedure. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Yes, Lancelot, I got your note, but I'm afraid I won't be able to bake Wednesday. No, not Thursday either, I'm afraid. Well, well you, you see, my London practice is getting very busy now. Yes. Well, thank you for thinking of me, anyway. All right. Um, look, Lancelot, I've got to go. I've got a patient waiting for me. All right. Bye. Hello. Hello, Tommy. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, it's all right. How are we feeling today? Better? Oh, today, tomorrow, this week, next week. I shall always feel the same way about you. Oh, you're not going to start all that again, are you? Well, I can't help it, old girl. You've knocked me for six. Oh, I thought I was just getting you up on your feet again. <laughs> not much oh. chance of that, I'm afraid. But I'll tell you this, if I were back on my feet, that fellow who keeps ringing you, he, he wouldn't stand a ghost of a chance. Oh, eavesdropping, eh? <laughs> well, why not? All's fair, etc. Oh, listen, Iris, you could do worse, you know. I mean, there's the old gratuity and a nice property with a few acres of rough pasture and a couple of chestnuts for you to exercise. Oh, I can see it all. You, whooshing up the drive in the old Aston Martin after a hard day in the hospital. Yeah. Hmm? What would you be doing? Oh, sitting on the terrace with the odd noggin, the old double barrel over my knee, waiting to take a pot at a stray wood pigeon. <laughs> Honestly, Tommy, you're a hopeless case. Yes, I know. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. No, no, no nor did I. Just a, a hopeless case of love. Hmm? Tell me. Yes? Now, I've got to stop this. You must concentrate on your treatment. I haven't got much choice, have I? <laughs>
What are you gawping at? Well, it's fantastic. I've never seen such wonderful results from dieting. You know, not everybody has the discipline or self-control, you know. That's true. Well, now that you've started, you must keep it up. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Well, I mean, it'd be a pity, wouldn't it? A terrible pity if you had a, a sort of sudden relapse. <laughs> uh, before Iris sees you. I don't understand the woman. She's turned down two invitations to dinner and mutters something about having to go to London to look after her patients. What, at night? So she says. What's the matter with her? Well, she could be being discreet. Oh, you mean she's got a man up there? A lover? No, I didn't say that. It's impossible. Good God, she's got me. Not quite, I gather. No, you're quite right, son. I shall have to do something. We'll have to get cracking. <laughs> What's that, indigestion? No, it's only a twinge from my old rupture. I think I'd better have a look at you. Come on, take off your coat. No, it's perfectly no, 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 all right. This is very serious. I mean, these old lesions can blow up. Simon, I can promise you it's all right. Now, it's very kind of you to come. Thank you very much indeed. I'm most grateful. Right, you're quite sure. I shall leave. All right. Well, you know where to get me if you need me. I mean, should something explode? <laughs> Hampton Cross, do you happen to know the name of a detective agency? You don't. Well, give me direct inquiries, please. A man. Excuse me, sir, but what would you like for lunch? A man. Yes, sir. I'll have his head on a platter. Very good, sir, and I'll do a little braised celery to... What did you say, sir? I said... <laughs> I want a full report on where the lady goes, what she does, and whom she meets. Understand? You can rely on us, Sir Lancelot. And I don't want anybody else to know anything about it. With a soul of discretion, sir. Do you, do you mind if I sit down a moment, sir? What's the matter, man? Have you got an inflamed appendix? If you do a good job on this, I'll whip it out for you to discount. It's nothing, sir. Just a little indigestion. It comes and goes. Rather like the lady in question, I gather. <laughs> You'll be gathering a fractured coccyx if you don't mind your manners. Oh. What's that? Oh, the emergency appendix, sir. Simon's doing it. Hmm. I think I may as well wander along to the theatre. 
Take my mind off things. Morning, Mr. Holly. Now, you've nothing to worry about. You won't feel a thing. Just you relax. Thank you, Doctor. Hello. i just come to watch. It's a long time since I saw you offer it. That is, of course, if you don't mind. Well, no, I don't mind at all either. All ready, Dr. Sparrow. Thank you, sister. As long as you don't give me any free advice. Well, I'm not likely to do anything like that, am I? Morning, everybody. Anything to do to see you? I went to the All right, George. Okay. All right, sister. What are you doing? What's that? That's my primary incision. You don't call that little scratch an incision, do you? Cut, man, cut like I... I taught you. Get your shoulders to it. You look as if you're opening an oyster. I wish you'd shut up like one and keep your pearls wet for someone else. I'm sorry, Simon. I'm only trying to be helpful. I shan't interrupt anymore. Retractor, sister. You don't call that piddling little thing a retractor, do you, sister? That is the retractor Dr. Sparrow always uses, Sir Lancelot. Nonsense. Give him a big one. He wants to collar the colon, not eat a frankfurter. You keep your gastronomic conversations to yourself. Well, I can only say it's not the way I should do it. Well, it's not your case. Very well. If that's your attitude, your old teacher, I shan't see any more. Bad sign. Can't stand friendly criticism. It's a nasty one. That's better out than in. Right, George. Start heading up now. Right here. Hey! What do you think you're doing? You ought to be on the job. Wake up! What do you think I'm spending good money on you for? Wake up! Hey, mind my stitches! Oh, no. Sorry, madam. Stroke. I'm sorry. You'll have to pay for all these things. Oh, very well. Yes, I do. Well, he shouldn't be allowed out. Is he a nutcase? No, he's a friend of mine. Look, some people do have them. Well, before he does any more damage, I reckon you ought to get him to see a doctor. I am a doctor. Lucky to open an umbrella indoors. Not for me, madam. 
You might have taken my eye out. Madam, in my time, I've taken practically everyone's everything out. <laughs> Don't! Stop it! Don't! Must be a raving lunatic. I say, I do beg your pardon. I say, sorry. I didn't realize I beg your pardon. Well, actually, there is room for me just there if I squeezed in between you and the lady with the red hat. You wouldn't mind, madam, if I could just move beside you. I'll just put my coat on the rack. Excuse me. Thank you. Don't worry, ma'am. Just a bit. Thank you. That's fine. <laughs> Take me out. <laughs> It's very all right, perfect all right. I'm a doctor and you fainted. Oh. Well, thank you, doctor. You're, you're very kind. You feeling better now? Oh, yes, thanks to you. I do apologize for making such an exhibition. Whatever must you have thought of me? But you see, I have had the most terrifying experience. <clears throat> Would you like to tell me about it? You see, there was this dreadful man in my compartment. Oh, it was awful. I think as long as I live, I shall never forget the sight of his dark glasses and his... Dark glasses? Yes. And an umbrella? Yes. See, Doctor, I'm sure that he's a... a maniac. Migraine in disguise. Don't be a pattern. All right, all right, all right. You're quite safe. He's gone. Oh, uh, but doctor. Please do try and be calm, will you? I, I can't. I, I can't. Now look here, you've got your knitting rack. Count your stitches. It's very soothing. Good day. Yes, of course I can be ready. Champagne in the icebox. So, sorry, uh, what did you say? Oh, so sorry, I didn't quite get that. Well, what sort of clothes will I need? Nothing at all. Oh, I see, when I get there. Oh, yes, I'm terribly excited, tell him. Midnight? Tonight? Oh, yes, yes, of course I'll be there. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, oh, Simon, darling! You're late. I very nearly didn't get here at all. I've had a terrible journey up, a terrible day, and I'm in a terrible mood. Well, I've had a fabulous day, and I'm in a fabulous mood. Well, bully for you. What's so fabulous about it? Charming. Oh, well. Oh, Simon, don't look so miserable. Well, I am miserable. Will you just stay with it then, because I am going to pack. Pack? Where are you going? I go, my lord, to the eternal city. 
You have to be kidding, of course. No, I leave on the midnight plane for Rome. Arrivederci, Roma. Yeah. Si, caro. Rome only means one thing to me, the sorrows of Salome. Hmm, does it? Yes, it does. Have you been having another bash at that midget movie, Magnus? Hmm, <laughs> supposing I had. Would you mind? Yes, I would, very much indeed. Anyway, I'd say it needs your head testing. Why? Well, anyone wants you as a personal handmaid, and I know the type. <gasps> Simon, don't be so disgusting. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with Mr. Heilbronn. I am a model. It's just like being a doctor. I'm always on call. That's what worries me. How long will you be away for? Oh, well, that depends on uh, how many shows we have to do with the new collections. And... Well, do stop looking so Neolithic and, and get my suitcase for me. Delia, I didn't come here to help you to pack. Well, if, uh, if you help me to pack, darling, there'll be lots of time for what you really came for. It's all in the oven. <laughs> Waiting for somebody, sir? No, officer. Just taking the air. Or a golden umbrella, sir. Well, hello, Corker. Good gracious, it's you. Quite a coincidence. Are you looking for somebody? Uh, yes. Oh. Well, you're making it rather difficult for yourself. What? Oh, you mean these? It's just a touch of pink eye. Oh, I'm sorry. It's much better. Good. You're wearing your... Uh, yes, yes, I'm treating somebody. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just paying a call on an old friend. Oh, really? Yes. Which flat? Uh, that one. Oh. Well, you'd better ring the bell, hadn't you? Yes, I suppose I had. Unless you've got a key. Don't be so absurd. Not that kind of friend. This is the Camberwell Sewage Disposal Unit. Can I help you? Yes, this is Victoria 2191. What on earth is the matter? What did you say? Who is it? Be quiet. Yes, I certainly did get that message. Oh, give me the Will telephone. you be quiet? And the same to you. Who was it? So you are going to Rome to model dresses, are you? Oh, well, yes. You know I am. And you've never set eyes on Mr. Heilbronn. Was that it? Was that no, it? it wasn't, Mr. Heilbronn. But it was one of his blue alpaca-suited, frilly-shirted minions rounding up the harem with a car for the airport. And, and, they want you. Can you explain that? For one dreadful moment, I thought it had all fallen through. What? Well, me. He still wants me. Yeah, for the movies. Look, I know you think I haven't got any talent. You're very good at some things, but as an actress, I... I'd... You're jealous. Jealous? Me? Jealous? Of that fat, paunchy, short arm... And spiteful. Spiteful. Ha. Spiteful. I'm just boggling at the sheer gullibility of it all. Do you really think you're going to get a part in this epic? You're going to be one of thousands. I shall be one in a thousand. Mr. Heilbronn says I might be a discovery. He says he's going to take me and mould me and make me. That he will certainly try to do. Mr. Heilbronn is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Heilbronn. 
listen, listen. I only want to protect you. I don't need protecting. You do need protecting. Oh, go and pack your little black bag. You come with me. If you want to get something for that, mate, otherwise you'll be under the doctor. I... <laughs> Look where you're going, man. You're drunk. Hey, Rosie, would you like me to grow a nice bit of fungus like that? Oh, don't know. <laughs> Get out of my way. You're a disgrace to the Empire. Oh, come on, love. <laughs> But I've already explained, madam. I want a triple rum and aniseed. Purely for medicinal purposes. I repeat. You can repeat all night, dear, if you want to, but we're closed. But I need it. Rum. R-U-M. S-H-U-T. Shut. <laughs> oh, you can't, Rosie. Not till the train starts. Oh, but I must. I suppose we haven't got an aspirin or better still a hip flask, have you? No, I'm sorry, I'm off duty too. <laughs> Do you have a good day? Splendid. I've had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. I've been pestered by lunatic females, moronic railway employees, and drunken sailors. I got soaked to the skin, and I've broken my umbrella, and to crown it all, I made a fool of myself in front of the woman I love. Oh. You met your rival? There isn't one. She's perfectly innocent. So is the right to giving way to jealousy. Sort of mistake you wouldn't have made. No, no, that would be absolutely fatal. What do I do next? Well, you have rather shown your hand, haven't you? I think you'll just have to pop the question. You mean a formal proposal? Well, I can't see what else you can do. <laughs> you! Oh, if it isn't the paper, how are you going, sport? You can't come in here. What, is this a first class, then? Indeed it is. Is that a bottle of rum? Indeed it is. Would you like a slug? First class. Help yourself, Squat. Help yourselves. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Uh, you were saying, Simon? Hmm? Oh, well, yes. Well, now that you've tried the uh, creeping barrage, I think you'd better try the uh, frontal attack. Hey, Rosie. You love me? I don't know. You mean straight out of the blue? Well, no, we must always exercise a little finesse. Well, do you like me? I don't know. And timing. Timing's very important. Yes, I recognize that, but uh, what do I actually say? Do you like anyone else, then? I don't know. Well, you can't sort of put a girl in a corner and boldly come out with it. Hell, Rosie, will you marry me? I don't mind. You little beauty! <laughs> <laughs> I have asked you here, my love, in order to tell you that for some time past, you know, every look I have cherished, mm -hmm, cherished, your every gesture I've interpreted with hope, and your every move I've had carefully watched. No, bastard, I don't mean that. I have asked you here. Yes, Lancelot? Why have you asked me here? I have asked you here. Yes? I've asked you here because it's the only damn place I can get any privacy in this hospital. You say? I have to perform a very tricky operation, ma'am. A heart operation. Iris, uh, I am no longer, by the world's standards, a young man. The uh, prime of life might be a better description. Uh, you could, of course, do over the bedroom to your own taste and invite your mother to stay once a year. That is indeed to have one. Lancelot, are you proposing to me? Well, I'm not lecturing to the Royal College of Surgeons. But, uh, do 
Do you love me, Walker? Passionately. And I love you deeply and sincerely. And have the honor of asking you to become my wife. Well, that's quite a compliment. You accept, of course. Oh, I, I appreciate it, but it's a big step. You must give me time. Damn it, woman, it's marriage I'm offering you. You can't ask a time like somebody who owes the landlord for last quarter's rent. Aren't you fond of me? Oh, I am, I am. I'll give you my answer when I'm more sure of it. Harris! Help! I'm stuck! No good, you're too heavy for me. I'll get help. Ooh, oh, ooh. Should I get a male nurse or a plumber? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. Sonia! And you do not come here again. Sonia! Expect me to be sick. Gentlemen. Don't mention it. It's an easy thing to do. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. You come to see me? No. I just came to collect some things that I'd uh, left here. I didn't know that Delia, uh, Miss Mallory, had... Oh, yes, I've let her flat. Come in. Come in, please. You know Miss Mallory very much? Uh, well, no, she, she used to give me the odd shakedown when I was staying in London on business. Shakedown? Oh, yes. You shake yourself down often? Not by myself. That's good. That man. All build up. No shakedown. Oh? You want some nuts? Uh, no, nuts, no, thank you, no. You should. Healthy. Sit. Thank you. Oh, you're bruised. No, no, no. I, I, I'm sure it's very... I will treat to it. You what? I will treat to it. There's no necessity, I promise you. But I'm a masseuse, you know. Take off the garments and I will massage you. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd rather keep the garments where they are. I'm strong, feel. It's wonderful. And this? Terrific. Can I have a glass of water, please? Yes. Water is purging. I'll fetch. Left some things here. Funny, so did I. Can I give you a hand? Oh, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Oh, thank you. Is that heavy? <laughs> Just a bit. You're some woman. I'm liking you too. <laughs> You're skinny, but have the lovable. No? Well, um. You do not think I, I have the lovable? Oh, yes, yes, you have the lovable, and you're not a bit skinny either. And now I massage your bruise. I what? 
Yo, Bruce, you take out the trouser rings. The trouser rings are perfectly all right where they are. Thank you very much. So English. But where I come from, we all take out the trouser rings. Right. You start. Yes. Good evening, sister. Oh, good evening, Dr. Sparrow. She's fully round. Mm. You heard today's results? Yes. Have you ever had an operation? Not a big one. Just an impacted wisdom tooth. I must get my teeth seen to. After this, it's silly to be frightened of the dentist. Frank can't stand with me with false teeth, even old women. You're not old at all. Was the operation all right? Yes. The operation was fine. You said it would be. Did I? You can't always believe what doctors tell you. Mary, I'm not a doctor yet. It's good as. I believe you anyway. Do you want another drink? I'm going to get quite well, aren't I? Without question. Quite well. But I'm afraid you're going to have a whacking great scar. I don't mind that. Well, it won't show. By the time you're a granny, you'll forget you ever had it. I think it's time you went to sleep now. I'll get sister to give you an injection. You won't mind that, will you? It's not easy, but we have to do it always, Joe. But, sir, there's no but about it. You see, sir, I couldn't tell her, because all the time I knew for certain. Do you? You don't know anything for certain, nor do I, nor does anybody. How can there be any doubt? There's always doubt. We could be wrong about what we found today. We could be right. But tomorrow there might be a discovery which could save her. In six months' time, she could be run over by a bus. In a year's time, we could be blown up. In two years' time, you could be a very good doctor. But we can't be certain about anything. Get it? Yes, sir. Or remember it. Yes. Good. Strong? <coughs> yes. That's good. What is that you bring? This I bring is a bottle. Yeah, I see. Alcohol? It has alcohol in it. You know, of this I do not approve. It's weakening. It's supposed to be a tonic taken in moderation. With me, you do not need the tonic. Mm. There are two points of view on that. Oh! <laughs> there! We have the grapefruiting juice. <laughs> you set for three? Oh, yes. Yes, I did not tell. It is my sister, Helga. She's oh. visiting with me. <laughs> is she like you? Yes, we are twin sets. Oh, we are very close. We share everything together. What? But you, you will like her. She's strong, like me. At home, she teaches the physical culturings. And she will like you. Yeah, she will like you, too. Have you got any more sisters? Oh, yes. At home, Ilse. But Ilse is a baby. She is a police constable. A what? Police constable. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> eh, that will be Elga. Hmm? Let her in, please. I will get the grapefruit juice in. Oh, you are the sparrow. Oh, yes. So 
Sonia tells me about you. She says you have the love of all. Have you? Uh, apparently, yes. Well, we'll see later, no? Yes. Elga, I'm here. Good. I have the hunger. You're liking my sister? Uh, she's charming. She's liking you too. We have the agreeable evening, yes? Yes. Yes, please. Yes! Where are you? In London? Oh, come round at once. Helga, it's little Yes. Yes. Yes, so very nice that we're in London again. How long are you here? Det är för att träffa dig igen. Och nu är Simon här hos oss. Och du kommer tillbaka Simon. Jag just berättat för Simon om dig. Simon frågade om du hade fler systrar. Och jag berättade om dig. Jag berättade att du är poliskonstapel. Hur har du det? Har du mycket att göra? Kom hit och träffa Simon. Jag tycker mycket om Simon i den målet. Här kommer Helga. Ja! Simon, it's is just coming. Kom hit och träffa Simon och Sonja och din vän. Simon? Simon? Nej, det är What's wrong with the English? We uh, want to see some engagement rings, please. Not too expensive ones now, Simon. Congratulations, sir. I'm sure we can tempt father's generosity. Don't be impertinent. I'm not his father, and the ring's for me. A perfectly natural mistake, Lancelot. Ah, uh, I understand. May I get the size of your finger, please? You'll get the back of my hand across your face if you don't hurry up and show me some diamonds. Yes, sir. When, when are you going to uh, give it to us? Tomorrow. No regrets? Oh, in for a penny, in for a pound. I shouldn't have got as far as I have if it hadn't been for your help. Yeah, well, after this, you can help me. I'm going around to a flat to pick up some things I left behind there. If I can be of any assistance. No, I need protection. The flat is guarded by three man-eating females. Oh, it's you. Did you forget something? I just dropped by to pick up some of the things I had left behind. Uh, Sonia, this is Sir Lancelot Spratt, Miss Stromberg. How are you doing? Come in, please. Have you uh, any sisters about? No, they have gone home. Oh, what a shame. Him, you've met. It is now my fiancé. There seems to be an epidemic. You're a friend of Simon's? Yes. Sit. You're old. That's good. Simon needs the company of wise old men. He smokes and drinks himself too much. This is not good. I used to tell him when we were shaking ourselves down together. Indeed. She's a remarkable woman. She's a masseuse. Physiotherapy. We masseurs are strong. Strong in arms, strong in mind, no? Madam. And he is strong too. But not like me. After we married, he leads a new life. I change everything. His ideas, his habits, everything. That is what women do. Otherwise, they're losing their personalities. You are married? Not yet. If you were married, your wife would make you do exercise every day for your big stomaching. It's too big. You should eat nuts, not meat. For him, no meat, never. Nuts make virility. That I demand. Thank you, no. Thank you, yes. You will not marry yourself now. You would not like change. And change you would have. All women do it. Not all men are liking it. Madam, I'm inclined to agree with you. It's no use, Simon. I've been thrashing it out all night. You can't chuck everything up. After all the help I've given you. I know, I'm, I'm awfully grateful, but, well, here, you take that. You probably know somebody would like it. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I want to have a word with you, if I may. I'm afraid I'm busy, Lancelot. You can wait, can't you? What do you mean? Hey, now, look here, old chap. I I'm having my treat with you. You can't push me around like this. That's well, just exactly what I can. <laughs> have somebody. Stop 
this damn thing! Where's the fire? Get me back in there! And what impertinence? Refusing me? Well, you see, I love somebody else. Might one inquire the name of this whippersnapper? Oh, look here, friend. Simon? What? No, no, him. You snake in the grass. By Jennifer, sir, if what? I had the use of my legs, I'd... Somebody stop this! What do you think? Okay, he loves me. But it's not allowed, not with the patient. Well, it is if you marry them. Let me near the villa! Major French. Huh? You're walking. Huh? Oh. Good grief. Oh, uh... ah! <laughs> Tommy, I knew your legs would get better. What a marvelous surprise. Well, uh, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Uh, you're wanted, sir, urgently. Excuse me. Well, I don't know what to say on these occasions, but I know what to do. <coughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, that's plenty, sir. <laughs> hmm. What kind of a case is it? Well, I haven't seen anything quite like it, sir. You mean three heads? Uh, no, poodles. Poodles? Uh, yes, sir, pink. You've been at the ether. Delia. Ciao, caro. Ciao. What happened? Didn't you get the part? No, I just got most of the presents. So I can see it. <clears throat> what are you doing here? Well, I've come to get my latch key. Have you got it? Yes, I have. And I think I'm going to keep it. What are you doing? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm waiting for you to drive me up to London. Because by a fabulous coincidence, I've got the evening off. <laughs> 